Hey guys, it's Chris. Thanks for joining us on YouTube or IGTV. And man, it's great. Maybe you're catching up because you didn't get the chance to join us on Friday or maybe you're re-watching the message. That's great. But if you've never joined us on a Friday, could I encourage you as much as you can get the message now? What we do on a Friday, it's so much more than the message. It's a community to belong to. It may be an online community right now, but it's real people on the other end of it. And it's so much more than a service. We can connect in the comments. You can join us and hang out with us after the service. So if you've never joined us on a Friday, send us a DM on Instagram. Send us a message on YouTube. Uh, and, you know, we'd love to just give you more information and we'd love to see you on a Friday. So enjoy the message, but hopefully we'll see you on a Friday soon. Hey, youth, it's Chris. Welcome back to Youth Online. Man, what an amazing week we had last week with uh, Jedediah Thurner. I don't know why I paused after I said Jedediah, um, but Jedediah Thurner with the young adults joining us. But it's great to be back, uh, back on the stream. And uh, I've got a message that I believe God's going to use. And it's going to not just encourage us, but it's also going to challenge us. You see, sometimes we have messages that, uh, that uplift us and make us feel, yeah, we can take on the world. But God also works in challenges because when we get challenged, it helps us grow. It helps us uh, be better. And it points out areas in our life that we need to change or we need to yield to God. And I hope that this message today will help you with that. And for the message, we're going to take a look at the, at the Bible, obviously, because it's God's Word, and that's why we call it the Word. And we believe God's got a message um, for you. But we're going to take a look at the Old Testament in the Bible, at the Book of Judges. We're going to take a look at the life of Samson. Samson's found, like I said, in the Old Testament, Book of Judges, and he was one of the judges that ruled over Israel for 20 years. And he was a pretty amazing guy. Uh, he had this massive, not massive strength. I don't even call it massive strength. He'd had this, this supernatural strength. I mean, he tore down buildings. Uh, in, in one instant, he took the jawbone of a donkey and he killed a thousand men uh the one day he lost a bit so he he beats up 30 people and takes their clothing to pay off his i mean he was dude was nuts okay dude was crazy but he wasn't just crazy he was actually set apart because god used the strength that god had given him uh to fulfill his purpose you see when samson was uh, not when he was born just before he was born his parents were visited by an angel uh, and they told him about you know samson is going to be set apart he's going to lead the people and he's supposed to be set apart and he's supposed to be holy so they set up a whole bunch of rules and and samson was actually fulfilling god's purpose for a lot of it but sometimes he lost the plot he he he, he fell into a little bit of pride um he 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 started dating the wrong woman. He was unequally yoked. Um, and um, in fact, he even visits a prostitute in one of the stories. And then as he's leaving, he tears the gates of that city. So uh, he was all over the place. But there's one particular story involving Samson that's interesting. And it's where he has this encounter with a girl named Delilah. You can read about Samson in Judges 13 through 16, and I know we did a reading plan, but it's just three books of the Bible, um, or rather not three books of the Bible, three chapters in the Bible, and there's a lot in there that we can learn from, particularly as young people, because I think Samson speaks to our generation. But like I said, there's one story I want to look at, and it's found in Judges 13, and it's the story of Samson and Delilah. The Bible says Samson fell in love with Delilah, but Delilah wasn't playing those games. It's in the wood in the street version, I think. Um, but honestly, so, so Samson falls in love with Delilah. But what ends up happening is when the Philistines find out, those are the enemies of the Israelites, what they do is they go to Delilah and they say, hey, we'll pay you if you'll do something for us. In fact, take a look. It's going to come up on the screen uh, now. And it's found in Judges 16 verse 5. It says this. See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. You see, what Delilah ends up doing is she ends up taking what the Pharisees say, she takes the money from them eventually and she eventually subdues Samson. How does she do that? She eventually, she, she kind of keeps asking him week, day in, day out, what is it? What is the, the, the strength to your secret? Nope, the secret to your strength. And then he says, it's my, you have to braid my hair, you have to use new, new ropes. And she gives him a whole bunch of excuses until eventually she wears him down and he eventually tells her, the Bible says, she t he tells her everything. And he says, hey, you know, if you shave my head, I'll lose my strength because I am a Nazarite. I have this, 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 this covenant and this vow with God. And if you shave my head, I'll lose my power. And what ends up happening to Samson is just that, is when she finds it out, she gets the Philistines to shave his hair. They capture Samson and they do that. They tie him up and they subdue him. In fact, not only do they tie him up, not only do they subdue him, they end up gouging his eyes out and throwing him in prison. And he becomes entertainment for them. And you know, on some level, all of us can relate to this. Some of you are like, what, Chris, what do you mean? I'm not, I'm not dating someone who's, no, no, who's trying to put me in prison. That's not what I'm talking about. Some of you are like, actually, Chris, you should see my ex because maybe, just maybe. No, no, what I'm saying is just like Samson, you and I, we are called 
by God. We are set apart. We have purpose in our lives. But as we go through life, as we go through lockdown and we're bored in the house and we're in the house bored, as we go through the various seasons in life, as, we, as sin knocks on the door, as temptation comes in and knocks on the door, what it tries to do, it, it tries to tie us up and it tries to subdue us so that we won't fulfill our purpose. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the life of Samson, look at what we can learn from his life and apply in our own lives. The title of your message is this, Hey There, Delilah. And I don't know, do you even know that song? I think that song came out in like 2013. If you do, comment in the... I keep doing this like there's comments here, and it, it's not. If you're watching on Instagram, the comments are probably there. And if you're watching on YouTube, the comments are there. Or Actually, the comments are there. Anyway, I'm just having an existential crisis, having a conversation with myself. So the first point, in fact, before we get to the first point, I just want to read you something that happens in Judges 16, verse 16. This is just before Samson tells Delilah the secret to his power. And it says this, With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So point number one is who's nagging you? You see, in our lives, as we go through life, there will be different people, different voices in our life. And, um, and sometimes those voices would be the voices that nag us. And we would ask ourselves, who's nagging us? Maybe in your life, it's an actual person or a group of people. And when they nag you, they, they nag and they nag and they nag. And they eventually, uh, they nag you to death almost. One of the translations doesn't say he was sick to death. It says he nagged him to death. And, that would, and that's what can happen in our lives. When we have the wrong people that keep nagging at us. I don't know, maybe it's a group of friends. Are you going to youth again? Are you going to youth again on a Friday? Don't you ever want to hang out to this? God knows where you are. You don't have to go to youth on a Friday. Or maybe then we just started doing online youth and it was like, hey, do you really need to go online? They won't know if you're not there. You can just catch up in the week on YouTube. Nobody would know. You see, those voices, what eventually ends up happening is they would nag and they would nag and they would nag. And just like Samson was sick to death of it or they, she nagged him to death, what can happen in our lives is, our convictions can be worn to death. They can tire our convictions out until what ends up happening is we don't have those convictions anymore. And we don't even realize that it's happening. But it's not just people that can be nagging you. So often in our lives, it can be a situation that's nagging us. It can be temptation that's constantly nagging us. It can be sin. It can be a whole bunch of things. And just like sometimes a person could nag us to death or nag our conviction to death, what ends up happening is our consciousness gets nagged to death. Our holiness gets nagged to death. Our, the, the, nags to death to death. And what ends up happening is we aren't where we need to be and it takes away from our purpose. So we need to be aware of the things or the people that are nagging us. But I think one thing that we can all agree on, uh, one thing that's going to nag us is notifications. In fact, right now you might be watching on this device. You might be watching on IGTV or YouTube. And it's interesting, that same device that you're watching and you're getting God's word in is the same device that could nag us and distract us because it gives us access to the wrong people. It can fuel our addictions. It can take away from our purpose. It can cause us to fall into more sin all because of the notifications that are on our phone. And can I just point out something? You know, I mentioned addictions. Can I just say that not every addiction is a dirty one? Uh, you know, just because it, it's, not, it's not dirty or uncomfortable doesn't mean that's not good. For example, everybody loves Instagram, everybody loves TikTok, but how many of you know that could become an addiction for us and we don't even realize it? Let me give you a quick acid test. What's the first and last thing you do? The first thing in the morning and the last thing you do before you go to bed. For many of us, the first thing we do is we wake up and we grab our phone because our alarm's on it, that we unlock it and we go to an app. And that first app is often TikTok or Instagram or WhatsApp. And here's a question that I, that I have to ask myself, and I've been challenged on this, is before I put my feet on the ground when I get out of bed, have I spent more time online than I have in God's word and praying to him? Because if God is our priority, Instagram shouldn't be the first thing we go to, and it shouldn't be the thing that puts us to sleep at night. We need to make sure that we are prioritizing God and not letting the distractions of social media, not letting the distractions of our phone pull us away from God's purposes. What we need to do instead is say, hey, this is a tool that God can use and it can benefit me. It can help me get closer to God, but I'm not going to let this rule my life. I'm not going to try and find time to spend with God. I'm going to put my phone down. I'm going to put my screen time on and don't do the thing where you put screen time on your phone and then it pops up and you just ignore for 15 minutes, ignore for 15 minutes and eventually you just say ignore for the rest of the day. But instead what we need to do is you need to put our phone down, we need to put the distraction down and the notifications down. We've got to stop the nagging that happens because if we don't, what ends up happening to us is what happens to Samson is he ends up getting tied up and restrained. 
So what we need to do in our lives is we need to say, you know what, there's no more nagging. I'm gonna say no to the nagging. I'm gonna say no to the voices that nag, the people that nag me, the sin, the temptation. Instead, I'm gonna go to God and go to his word. How do you know if something's nagging you? Because nagging always does one of three things. In fact, it's gonna come up on the screen over there. Nagging always takes our strength, it takes our purpose, and it ties us up. What we need to do to combat that is we need to go to God and his word. Why do I say that? Because God does exactly the opposite. God and his Holy Spirit, it gives us strength. God will f- help us find our purpose. And more than that, his word and salvation, it offers us freedom. So instead of letting the nagging di- to dictate our lives, we need to go to God and his word. Because if we don't, we get tied up just like Samson. Because he gets tied up, because he gets worn out, he gets comfortable. In fact, he's sleeping on Delilah's lap. Look at what it says in Judges 16, verse 19 to 20. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him. Verse 20, then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Point number two is this, it's know that nagging never comes alone. I'm gonna explain that to you in a little bit, but nagging never comes back alone. I hope that you're taking notes, by the way. Uh, You know, studies show that when you write something down, you're more likely to remember it. So as great as it is to take notes on your phone, maybe if you're watching on your phone or you're watching on the screen, just have a notebook out, take some notes, have your Bible out, make sure you're writing the notes out. It'll help you remember it so that we can apply it in our lives. So point number two, nagging never comes alone. So I know that's a bit of a weird point, but let me explain Remember when you read that scripture, it says that she called a man to come and cut his hair. Don't you find it weird that in their room alone, that someone was there to cut his hair? I always like, like it's a bit weird. Like there's just a hair stylist and a point. I mean, like, Chris, you could use that right now. Just, okay, I'm going to get there eventually. But what's interesting is if you actually read the story, you'll find that what Delilah would do is she would actually hide soldiers in her room in the hope that Samson would give her the secret. And when he would give her the secret, when she'd say the Philistines are upon you, if he was subdued, then they would attack him. So she was never alone in the room with Samson. And that's exactly how temptation and sin works in our life. It tells us this. It says, you know what? This is what you want. This is what you need. Samson thought he was going to get something else, if you know what I mean. But instead, what ends up happening is he gets captured. And that's what sin does, just like Delilah does in the story. It lures us in. It says, hey, you need this. You want this. And it never tells you the full story. It never paints the full picture until it's too late, until you're addicted and you can't have relationships with anyone, until you've gone so far away and you've isolated yourself from people that your, your sins cause the anxiety and the anxiety is causing you to hold back until you've forgotten your purpose, you've forgotten who God is. And that's exactly what happens to Samson. You see, for Samson, he might have been in love, but he was walking in to an ambush. And that's the same thing that happens in our lives is when we get worn down, our convictions, our conscience, our holiness gets worn down, we get comfortable. We get comfortable, what ends up happening is we think we're gonna get something, but instead we get ambushed and we find ourselves tied up and subdued just like Samson was. So perhaps we need to ask ourselves, what have we gotten comfortable with? What TV shows have we watched that's allowed us to get comfortable with certain things? How comfortable are we with not reading our Bible every day? getting to God's word. How comfortable are we with not praying? You see, we've got to ask ourselves all these questions, the tough questions, because it wears at our convictions and our conscience. And it works hand in hand because then we get comfortable and before we know it, we're ambushed. And I know that there's some hard questions, but when we ask ourselves the hard questions, that's when we can make the most progress. And you know, being subdued isn't just something that happens overnight for us. It's a process. Even for Samson, as much as it happened in one night, what ends up happening, the Bible uses some very interesting words. It says this, so they began to subdue him. You see, it's a process. You see, it says they began to subdue him. As they cut his hair, he lost his strength. And then he thought he'd get up and say, you know, God, I've got this, but he had lost the presence of God in his life. And that's a pretty sad scripture to read, but you know, the same thing can happen to us. Being subdued is a process and it starts when we get comfortable, just like it did with Samson. When we get comfortable telling those jokes, when we get comfortable with the wrong people. You see, what we get comfortable with, what we allow is what we condone. And when we condone it, we'll end up doing it eventually. So we need to make sure that we guard ourselves against it now. Don't get comfortable. Because here's the saddest thing I read in the story. It's one, he didn't realize God's presence had left him. But two, the the soldiers, it says they gouged his eyes out. And what that tells me, it's a picture. When we're tied up, when we're subdued, that's where, that's where the enemy has us because what ends up happening then is we lose our vision. 
You see, Samson would have lost the vision. He would have lost sight of who God is, who he, who he was, what his purpose was. And when his eyes were taken out, he lost his vision. And I pray that never happens to you and I. We need to make sure that we keep our God up. We say no to the people that are nagging us. We need to know that if, someone's, if there's nagging in our life, it never comes alone. It's never telling us the full picture, sin and temptation and addiction. And we need to say no to it because we could lose our vision, just like Samson did. But you know what? Even in his low moment, even though all that had happened, God wasn't done with Samson yet. And you know what? Maybe you feel a little bit like Samson right now. Guess what? God's not done with you yet. Because look at the third point. The third point says this. It's we need to know where our strength comes from. It's going to come up on the little screen. Know where our strength comes from. You see, what's interesting with that story is Samson had possibly lost sight of where his strength actually came from. The Bible says that after this, his eyes are gouged out. He becomes a prisoner. In fact, he begins to perform and he begins to be entertainment for them. And that's a pretty interesting principle. You see, what we entertain in our lives, we we become entertainment for. And Samson, he, he loses sight of all he is, but God still uses him because right in his last breath, his last legs, he's blind. He, he, he's, doing his, he's doing his little performance. He's doing a little dance. Dance monkey, dance monkey. So he's doing his little dance and they put him in the prison and he, and, they, and he finds the two supporting beams and then he prays to God and he says, God, give me strength one more time. You see, in that moment, Samson realized where his strength came from. And I know that when he cut his hair, he lost his strength, but I don't believe that his strength came from his hair because in that moment, he prays to God and he pushes the, the pillars and the building comes down. You see, the Bible tells us that his hair grew back. And I think that in our lives, what we've got to understand is we need to remember where our strength comes from. And it doesn't come from our hair. Samson wasn't using Pantene, full and thick, and that's what was making him super strong. He wasn't using head and shoulders and, you know. The Bible doesn't even say Samson worked out in the gym. I'm pretty sure he was strong and he was probably pretty ripped. But his strength didn't come from that. His strength came from the presence of God. Because any time he did one of these amazing feats of strength, it came from God. The Bible says the Spirit of God came upon him. The Spirit of God came upon him. And perhaps Samson in his own uh, pride, in his own twisted mind, he had forgotten that. And what he ends up doing is just, hey, I'm strong. I'm the one who has the strength. And he forgot where his strength came from. You see, Samson, when he was born, the angel tells him that he used to be a Nazarite. And he took a Nazarite vow. And what that meant is that he couldn't do three things. The first thing is he, he couldn't touch a dead body. Uh, it was, we make him ceremony and clean. So he wasn't allowed to touch a dead body. He wasn't allowed to drink wine, anything fermented. And he also wasn't allowed to eat anything from a vine. So grapes, raisins, none of those things. And then the third thing was he wasn't supposed to cut his hair until his vow was done. And his vow was meant to be for his whole life. And you know what's interesting? When you read the story of Samson, you'll find that he's often, he's found in the vineyard. He's found touching dead bodies. And I think the third thing and the last thing of that covenant, God still showed him grace, was to cut his hair. And when his hair was cut, he had broken the covenant. Do you see our strength? It doesn't come from how much we can lift on the bench. It doesn't matter how strong we are as a person. It doesn't matter how many times in the morning we wake up in the morning and say, you're beautiful, you're classic, you're, you're bougie, and you're all those things. Our strength doesn't come from the amount of followers we have on Instagram or how good our TikTok dance moves come from. Our strength comes from God. And when his presence is on us, that's when we operate in his strength. And you see, not only does our strength come from God, but our strength comes from our obedience to God. And when we're obedient to God, that's where our strength is. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I preached a message, in fact, from the book of Judges. And I said, our victory is found in our obedience to God because our strength is found in our obedience to God. We need to remember our obedience because that's where our strength comes from. And when Samson remembered that, he pushes the pillars down. The Bible says he killed more people in his death than he did throughout his whole life. He brought victory over the Philistines. Samson did what he needed to do. He still fulfilled God's purpose. And maybe you're here and you can relate to Samson right now. Not super strong and you can break down buildings, but you kind of feel like you've been tied up and you've been subdued by life. You feel like life has gouged your eyes out and you've lost your vision. That for me is the saddest thing that could happen. But could I just encourage you, you know, we serve a savior named Jesus. And for a large part of the New Testament, he goes on healing people. And a large majority of those miracles are opening deaf ears and opening blind eyes. You see our savior, he specializes in restoring sight. And maybe you're here today and you need your vision to be restored. Maybe you're saying, uh, I can't see anymore. I've lost sight of who God is, who I am. I, I never, I've never even seen God before and I don't know what my purpose looks like. I don't have vision. I've been subdued. I've been tied up. Well, guess what? There's a Savior in heaven who's done all the work for you. You see, this thing that we do when we meet online, when we, when we go do church online, it's not a religious thing. You see, religion says you need to be good enough and then you can get to God. Whereas Christianity says you'll never be good enough. That's why God came 
to us. 2,000 years ago where he hung on a cross and he paid the price for our sins so that our vision could be restored, that we could have a relationship with God, so that we could be close to God and that we could be strengthened through his presence. So if you're here and you've never said yes to God, or maybe you used to, like Samson, you used to fulfill his purposes, you were doing amazing things for God, but you began to get tied up and subdued. Can I just encourage you that God is still there for you and he still wants to use you. Just like Samson, his hair grew back. And when his hair grew back, God could use him again. And guess what? Maybe you've never said yes to Jesus before. Maybe you've never had an opportunity to. Or maybe, like Samson, you used to do amazing things for God, but you got distracted. Life subdued you and it tied you up. Well, guess what? God's waiting with his arms wide open. And he's saying, hey, come back to me. I'll give you new vision. I'll give you fresh purpose. So if that's you, one of those two groups of people, I'd love to pray for you. You can close your eyes and bow your heads. Or maybe you don't feel comfortable closing your eyes. That's okay. Just listen to the words of this prayer. Repeat after me if you want to, but let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for every single person who's made a decision for you today. Today, I pray that you would speak to individual hearts and lives. You'd restore the spiritual sight of people so that they would have vision again, that they would become unbound and untied, that they would begin to be strengthened. They wouldn't be subdued and overcome, but instead that we would have your strength in our lives. For those of us who are making a decision to come to you for the first time today, we invite you into our hearts. We give you the throne. We say you are our Lord and Savior. And then for people who are coming back, people who may have lost sight, Father, we just say, give us a fresh start. Give us new vision. Help us fulfill your purpose and re-strengthen us again. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Wow, what an amazing decision that you've made. We believe that if you've made that decision, your whole eternity will change. And you know, we'd love to help you along that journey. And in a little bit, Carly is going to tell you the next steps that you can take. But can I just give you three things that we should do to help us along this journey? So the first thing you need to do is read the Bible. You see, we believe that it's God's word. And when you understand the Bible, when you read God's word, you understand his character. It'll strengthen our relationship with him. But you know, maybe you don't have a printed Bible. Could I encourage you just download you version? It's a free app. It gives you access to the Bible. There's even devotionals and plans that you can read. The second thing you need to do is pray. Praying doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be, you know, this whole long thing. It can simply be this, God, I just need help today with online school. Amen. God, I support Man United and I just need some hope. Amen. Whatever it is. And you know what the third thing you do is this. It's make sure that you come back. Make sure that you come back next week, Friday. This is more than just a service. Don't say, oh, I'll catch it up on YouTube in the week. It's a part of a community that you can belong to. You can comment in the comments. You can connect with us in one of our teams after the service. Make sure that you keep coming back and watch what God will do in your life. Khalid will tell you the next steps and help you along the journey. Well, what a challenging message. I know I certainly was challenged by the message. And like Pastor Chris said, if you made a decision to follow Jesus, we have some details that are going to pop up on the screen. You can also send us a DM and we'd love to do this journey with you. Um, So we'll get in contact with you about that as well.